I already put this thing back on with the four bolts that holds it on. And there's going to be a little bit of a twist added to it. He, uh, the customer wants to change the, he wants to go ahead and change the slack adjuster. So we're going to be adding that job to it. I didn't want to do that, but I guess I have to. We bought another one just in case we needed it. And uh, he thought, well, it's here. Let's put it on. He doesn't like this one because it's different. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning up the oil I got on these brake shoes. I'm not allowed to do this in an open shop, but at home you can do it. They want you to replace them. Just more waste. They're brand new shoes. Just put them on a few weeks ago. I want to mention when you're, if you got to do this and clean the shoes with brake cleaner, uh, don't forget to clean the drum too. I'm going to take these cotter pins out, ones that are the same as these two here on this new one. I'm going to take those out so that I can flip this thing around and just screw it on straight like that without having to take the rest of this thing off of there. Finally got those pins off the back of it. That's pretty hard. Off the uh, clevis there, they were... They were rusted in like they usually are. Okay, move the camera in a little different spot here. I'm going to go ahead and get this clevis off, which is this piece right here. This is not worth the trouble. It's been rusted in place way too long. The uh, shaft is not coming out of the clevis. There's no way I can get it out. I can't get tools in there to work on this where it is. For another 30 bucks, he's already spent a, a bunch. We'll just replace the um, chamber and um, it'll all go together. Everything will be fresh, clean and new and it'll all go together real easy but can't do it now because it's getting dark. Back on this again the next day, I'm um, going to change this brake chamber. Went and picked one up this morning sitting there on the floor. And it comes with a new clevis, but I'm having an issue trying to find out since this one is so sloppy and messed up. I don't know where it actually seats at. To measure from here with this new clevis. Um, not getting a good measurement as to where this is actually going to line up at so looks like we got about an inch but sometimes it drops in a little farther so what I'm doing is going to the other side and checking it over there And this one over here, when we match up these uh, these pins, the gap between this piece here and the face of this chamber, I'm not going to get a a um, tape measure on it because I I would need a third hand, but I can look at that and say, well, that's uh, three quarters of an inch gap and that's what I'm going to go with so three quarters of an inch plus this distance here which is half an inch so we'll go with one and a quarter inches on the rod this is going to be one of the easier brake chambers to change because the uh, bolts that mount it are right out here where I can get an impact on both of them. Most of the time you cannot get an impact on them. 
without a lot of trouble if you can get it on there at all. So, I'm not going to do all this on cam. I'm just going to take an 11 16 wrench here, crack this one loose, which I already did. And then I go up here to this end of the hose. This is where the swivel is, so we just crack this one loose. And then the hose will swivel. And then we can take this end off. All right, I already zipped those bolts off of there, those nuts off of there. And uh, yeah, this thing's a wreck. This thing's a mess. We're gonna put another one on. One and a quarter inches from here, and since this measurement does not have to be 100% exact, I'm just going to estimate it. I work with measurements that size a lot, so I'm not worried about me missing it by much. And of course, the brakes are completely adjustable, so I'm running this nut all the way down. That's going to give me about my one and a quarter, about one inch right there from here to that face. I'm going to bring it out a quarter and cut this off right here. The reason I leave the nut on there all the way down is so that I have something to clean these threads with when I'm done. I'm going to use this little air cut off wheel. <coughs> And that just takes a long time, so I'm not going to sit here and hold the video on that. It takes about, I don't know, three or four minutes maybe to get through that. this nut off here it seems like it's pretty clean but I'm still gonna tap it a couple of times to loosen it up make the threads fit better and now I goofed when I was measuring for this thing here you know what they say measure twice cut once I'm not in trouble but this automatic slack adjuster has a different clevis, but this is not an automatic uh, slack adjuster clevis, this one here. And it is a little bit shorter, about an eighth of an inch shorter. So that means I gotta thread this one in about an eighth of an inch farther to get to the same place. So the inch and a quarter that I cut off, I'm probably going to be using a little bit more of that. This is not even threaded down as far as I'd like it to be, but I'm going to try to um, thread that down some more. I don't think I got any taps that size, so I'm just going to force this nut down a little bit farther. That's as far as it's going to go in. Um, it's going to leave me about seven eighths of an inch out instead of three quarters. So it's going to be out a little farther.
this pin's going to be out about a quarter inch farther than the other one. Still going to have good brakes, but it's going to be not quite the same as the other side. I'm going to go ahead and thread this on there so I don't have to pull these, these uh, clevis pins out. Just as easy to go ahead and thread it on there right here. And then we'll tighten it up on the truck. I just tightened this down with the impact wrench and I just want to say there's no reason to tighten it down super super tight. It just makes it hard for somebody to get it off. Uh, not this one so much you can put an air wrench on that but the one under it went the slack adjuster on you can't uh, get an air wrench on this one back on the bottom here. So I'm not going to put it on super tight because it is self locking nut and it's not going to come loose. So it just needs to be tight, but not crazy tight. I got to use a wrench on the bottom one. I'm going to take this little plastic plug right here out and replace it with this metal plug here because this is where the air hose was on the old one. So the air hose just naturally would probably like that position better so we'll just go on ahead and stay with that. Put the S cam in there. There is a spacer I'm looking for, and I found it right here. It's got grease on it, but I dropped it and got dirt on it, so I'm gonna wipe it off and put more grease on it. I had the old. Um, slack adjuster all greased up and ready to go back on and then the owner said let's go ahead and change that slack adjuster because you don't like this style that was on there it doesn't adjust the same as the other ones it does but it looks different and he's not all that mechanical so he'd rather have something that looks a little more familiar Actually, I don't think there's room to put this spacer in on this slack adjuster. It's got a shoulder in there. Let's see how that's going to work. Yep, I, know, I think it'll work with the slack, with that spacer. Okay, we got, yeah, put that spacer in there, it fits. Kind of makes it more square with the face of this. This, this, uh, this would have been kind of at an angle a little bit like that without the spacer. Now it's a little bit more square with this, so it does need the spacer. Got the S-cam pushed in there, nice and snug got the slack adjuster on now we got to stack some spacers on here just enough to get the c-clip um, or the snap ring on that groove where the groove will um, where the snap ring and the spacers will, will be very very slight amount of play uh, we want just barely enough play for grease to get in there and not um, bind up anything but we don't want 
any in and out play that's like measurable so let's say maybe no more than a 32nd of an inch or a 64th of in and out play should probably be uh, I'd be comfortable with that personally they give me a c-clip or I mean a snap ring that is way too big I gotta find the old one here it is here's the old one the old one's also thicker and by the old one being thicker it's not even going to go in the, the groove with these spacers let me make sure it'll go in the groove period yeah, it'll go in the groove without the spacers but I can't have that many spacers it's got to take one of these off there were three of them there was two thick ones and one thin one let's try it with well let's take the thin one out let's try it with just the two thick ones first Yeah, we got some play there. I can wiggle this around a little bit. I think we'll work with that. Yeah, anytime you take a snap ring off or a fitting of some kind, always save that stuff. When they give you new ones, save the old ones. You just never know when you gotta dig through that stuff and and uh, it'll save you a lot of time and aggravation trying to find that one piece because either they gave you the wrong one or you lost or broke one and that's all you lost and broke I think we are um, I think we're done with putting that on there